Jean-Michel Pité, VP of Engineering for AEM. Thank you very much for joining me in the session about delivering amazing experiences. Um, what I'd like, what I think that you will get out of this is to understand how you can use assets or imagery, as we have seen in the previous one, to, in, to make your um, experiences amazing. We've seen that in the previous customer uh, example that we have uh, just seen uh, in the plenary session, and I'd like to show you how you can use that in your situations. I think the second piece that I want to show you is what can we do or what can the solutions help you do to overcome the challenges that I see that we're all facing at in the industry. And I've been doing this so oh, for more than a dozen years. And it's actually interesting if you go back and take a look at what life looked like in those days. And at that time, it was just all about presenting information and having the customers come to your websites and take what they wanted. We looked at the click-through rates, at the cost per clicks, and we expected that somehow, magically, life would work out from then. But as we have clearly seen this morning, and I'm happy to say that Geometrics uh, is an up-and-coming company, the touch points are getting much more complex. The expectations from our customers on to getting the information from us are advancing in, in leapfrogging frogging ahead. And it's not just any information, but it's information that's contextual, and it's information that's about the moi me that's relevant to me so what that means for us in our to deliver amazing experiences it means that we need to understand where the customer is at in that contextual journey and we need to provide them information that is not just any information but is that is information that will help them move them along into their wishes why they are spending time with us the second piece challenge that we have is how we are organized around that internally. If you look at it, you have uh, everybody from us has a website. So everybody has a web team taking care of that content over there. Then you have the marketing team who worries about the messaging and the information. They go ahead and actually will look for the emotional uh, imagery, the emotional content, the emotional video that will outline that. If they can find it, what will they do? Exactly. Thank you very much. You didn't answer, but you thought it. I heard that. They go out and buy it, right? That's yet another team that gets generated. Okay. Then what we do have is we have an analytics team because this is a session about management or I talk about management. And what is management? Management defining objective, measuring progress, taking corrective action. So we will have an analytics team that will provide us the feedback to see how we can optimize this process moving forward. Now, all of us have should have teams that are working on the mobile app. So as you have seen on the geometrics, working on that application that is running on the app, not the mobile web, not the desktop web, but the mobile app. Now, with all these separate teams trying to get out of the message, think about the complexities of coordinating that. And think about what that means to our end customers. So I'm trying. I'm going to go into the danger zone of feedback here. Actually, I'm going to go to the left. I'm going to make an experiment. So even though while you have, sorry for camera, bad lighting, um, what I'd like to ask you is who of you is directly responsible or sort of closely related to producing information or content on the websites? Raise your right hand. One, 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 two, 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 three, 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 four, 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 four. four. Okay, so about, about half of them. Now, Exercise isn't open. Uh, so for those of you that have raised your hand, please try it again. Now we're going to really work on the muscle strength. Who of you uh, had updates to that uh, web information in, say, the last month? OK, that's good. And who of you that are still up had update in the last week? It's a bit fewer. OK, or we're just getting sort of uh, enough of uh, the exercise. Now, who of those in the last week actually had uh, uh, updates uh, in the last 24 hours? Well, okay, okay, so we do have some nice agility. I see Elsevier, very good job there. Thank you very much. Obviously, an AEM person, <laughs> so it's good. Um, now, uh, what I would like to see is uh, uh, for those folks that have raised your hand initially, can you please do me a favor and raise your hand again? Uh, yes, all of them up. Okay, okay, so who of you uh, also has access to mobile? and mobile information. Eh, that's about half overlap. And who of you who actually updated it in the last week, I'm not going to go to the last 24 hours, updated your mobile app in the last week? Okay, one, two. Ah, so you see that there, what you see. So you didn't see it, but I saw it. So let me summarize it for you. 
what you have seen is that we've just wasted three calories from our lunch uh, through the exercise and that the overlap between the teams that are working on the mobile application and the content in the mobile application, as well as the content on the websites are still separate. They're in separate flows, separate flows of information, and they're in separate teams or separate uh, life cycles. Okay, so we have the challenge problem from the customer expectations, we have the challenge and problem space from uh, the internal organizations. Now, if we look at this from a customer's perspective or what we do with their time, is another way for us to think about it is that we can use our customer's time, our customer's cognitive energy to try and connect these disparate experiences, or we can together find solutions how to integrate them, or you can find solutions how to have that in a seamless experience and use that cognitive energy to push on the customer and help them find the value proposition that you're offering. Because what we see out there is that while these demands have increased and the complexities of the channels have increased, the goals and objectives of marketing have not. They're still driving the brand, increasing the loyalty and the lifetime value of our customers. We do that through having a distinctive offering and being identifiable. Every dollar we spend for similarity and recognition and emotion will help. Every dollar, every activity, every minute, everything that we do that is divergent will not help to that. Next element that we're looking for is to drive demand, both for new customers and for existing customers upset. What we see here is that there is a direct correlation between digital experiences, usefulness, inspiration, and convenience. It is when the moi needs it, when I need it, that matters. And from that, there is direct correlation to the bottom line, to the upsell, to the customer finding the solution that they came for. And as you can see uh, from our perspective, Adobe's perspective, we believe that delivering Amazing digital experiences should not be rocket science. It might sometimes feels like it, but it should not. So let me take a step and illustrate how I think that we from Adobe can help you achieve that. And I think we've seen it before. Uh, there's two sides in the how we look at it from Adobe. On the one side, we have the digital media with a creative cloud where we've revolutionized the creation of creative media. And as you have seen in the previous presentation, it was adding new creative media, being more inspirational, having emotions uh, show through in that creativeness that allowed uh, the customer to change their brand perception and to have the increase. So that's one side of the house. And then I think the other piece is where uh, I find my home is digital marketing. This is where you are at home. I think we are using those creative media. But can we use them more? Can we use them in more intelligent way, more inspirational ways? And I think, yes, we can. And then if we look at sort of what is the unifying element between these two elements, it is the asset. And I'll get back to that in a bit. On the marketing side, we have the core services that were mentioned before. And you have the digital marketing cloud with the individual solutions. We cover it from customer acquisition over here, media optimization to managing the experiences, which I'll dive into afterwards, to campaigns, we've heard about that, which is the outbound channel. Once we actually have customer information, once we know who you are, we can let you know about the relevant information. Targeting, allowing us to personalize, make it relevant, the information for you. And we have the interaction with the social channels. And last but certainly not least, analytics, which helps us to measure across the whole band to optimize that. Now. On the experience manager, there are multiple ways how you can reach and create and manage those digital experiences. You have the sites. Sites are both targeted towards desktop and sites are both targeted towards the mobile. You have the assets. Those is the, that is the carrier of the emotional element. That is the imagery. That is what speaks to the heart. Then you actually have communities. Uh, which are for social communities, interacting with your customers, getting the feedback. Formula for forms, supporting you through multiple complex interactions. And last but not least, apps, which are mobile apps. Not to be confused with sites that are targeted for mobile devices, but the apps itself, the Geometrics app that you have seen before. Let me dive in to assets. 
what's interesting is you and I here right now are at a very interesting moment and a defining moment because the industry of digital asset management is transforming itself. If you look around at what my colleagues are doing in the industry, they're building dams to store assets. And yes, it's good that they're stored, but I actually don't think that that is very useful. What is much more inspirational is the ability to create, share, deliver these digital experiences across the teams from creative to the, uh, to the users and back again. And the way we do that within Adobe through AEM Asset Management is by having AEM assets that you can uh, leverage on-premise as well as uh, in the cloud that is adaptive to your creative workflows. Because what, how you work with your creatives and how you work between your individual teams is different between every company. And it is important that it matches your needs versus just standard flows. And obviously, it does that across the uh, transformations on the imagery and on the video. What you see is the combination between the creative to the management piece it goes through multiple flows. It goes from ideation to creation to management to delivery uh, of these assets. And the way that we support that is the through the creative cloud interaction integration that you have out there, as well as the, the management functionality allowing you to bring these two worlds together that you see out there. Because they're two separate worlds with a unifying element, the asset in them. Now, what you have to do is that in an in a, in a efficient and effective way that they need to be integrated together. But what is important is with this with this uh, flow is that it needs to be done in a way that you do not forget the creativity. So on the one hand, you have the delivery possibility to the devices out there. And on the other hand, you have the, the creatives that are, that are thinking about new emotional ways how to do that. And we need to find a way how to make create this combination in a very seamless manner. And we do that through embracing creativity. Because only Adobe do we have the skill set, the gene pool, to bring these two elements together. So on the one side, you have the creative sides. You have, they need to be inspirational. They need to be maybe sometimes a little bit chaotic. They need to think outside of the box. And they need to have new ways of sharing those emotions. And on the other side, you have the world of marketeers. Yes, we need to be agile. Yes, we need to be dynamic, but we also need to deliver. We also need to monetize and see how we are progressing towards our needs. Now, we cannot merge those two worlds because there are two worlds out there. But what we can do is we can actually bring these two worlds closer together. And we do that through the leveraging of assets. And we do that in leveraging assets and by creating sharing in the assets tool in the creation process through having those assets be shared through the individual teams, from the gentleman up there, from the mobile team to the web team, from the web team to uh, the social team. But they're also created into the creative uh, cloud. What we're also helping in this process of creation is through the combination of within the tool of pan sets, of sets that belong together, of versions, so that you know what belongs together. So you can create your transformations of the imagery for the multiple devices in the same tool. Next element that is needed is management. On the management side, the first item that I mentioned is that we need to be able to match the complexities of your business. How you go from a photo shoot to the end asset that are, is being approved and used, how the selection process works, how it works when you actually do work with outside creatives. We help that management flow. We help that management flow through the concept of projects where you can actually have the participants uh, play into it and you have all the variations and packaging in it. What is the next important element on the management piece is searching. And if you look at it, more importantly, actually finding. So it's nice if you search, but it would be helpful if you can find it. Because each time you can't find it, you need to go buy it again. 
And you give an example of one of the customers, it seems that a photo shoot costs them about $15,000 uh, to get new photo shoot versus the uh, finding those inside of the tools. Uh, last but not least, what you need to do, uh, what we can help with is the advanced imaging changes that are supported directly out of the tool and the advanced video changes. So when you're not just looking at still imagery, but video, it comes with previews of, of videos and it comes with uh, video delivery. All of these management elements go through a point where out of all the imagery that you have and all the assets, you choose some of them to be approved for public use. And those that are approved for public use, you want to share or internal use. And there's three ways how you can share those. The first way is through a media portal. So in the example of an adobe.com, that would be the marketing hub. This is where press and analysts and partners of ours will find our assets. Uh, you can also use it internally for assets that are only improved for internal. Um, for instance, this Medien portal is what it is called with Audi. Now, the next element that you have on the delivery and the sharing is the dynamic delivery. So if you look at most of the top 10 retailers are using AM dynamic media to deliver the imagery online directly out of the site. And when we talk about the last milliseconds, I think it's about 30 milliseconds that you have delayed for generating these personalized and context optimized assets. Personalized, context optimized. Context optimized means that you can use the assets independent of which device that you're there and it is optimized. It also means that it is optimized in how it is flown for, for instance, if we're looking at a video. As soon as your bandwidth goes up, the speed increases of how you get. As soon as the bandwidth comes down, what happens is you get the lighter version of it. And there is a third way where you can use these assets, and that would be in your web content management system or where you have your sites. Now, obviously, I have my preference uh, where that should be, and that would be AEM sites, which I will drive into with the next element. Because here is where I see what you as a business should see as, as a simple way to interact with the system. And what I would like to do is sort of what you should expect from your site management system is I would like to use AEM sites as sort of the reference because it is the leader uh, in the market. And I think from the perspective, from your perspective, what you can see is you should have it for you as a marketeer, it needs to be easy to use. It needs to be simple to use so you can get ag um, the agility you need. Well, the second thing you need is for the developers, it needs to be uh, uh, easy to uh, change and easy to develop, and it needs to be built on standards. And on a comment on the standards, uh, when we say leverage standards, it's not just leveraging standards, but driving standards. So for instance, that HTTP colon thing slash slash, that was written by Dr. Roy Fielding, who is the principal chief scientist at Adobe and who has been working with uh, AEM for since 2001. So what you see is that when what we do is we don't only uh, use standards, but we push standards to make it easier for your developers. Last but not least, what you have, it needs to address both the small microsite for your enterprise as well as scale out to many thousands of sites. And what you see on the left side over here is the editing interface uh, that allows you to have a what you see is what you get interface with drag and drop so you as a marketeer can make those changes. Now, back to what we needed to do. We had brand and we had demand. So for your brand experience, uh, what the tool should help you do is actually see how similar that brand is and where you're going with that brand. And by having it in front of you, seeing it in the multiple uh, landing pages, seeing it on the, on the mobile site, see it on the website, it is easy to see brand compliance. The agility allows you to be as fast as your or faster as your competitors and as fast as the market is evolving. And on the last side, you actually have the demand generation piece with the integrations to the campaign as we have seen it this morning, where you can take away the signals uh, from your customers, the interactions while they're anonymous and actually push onto the, and push onto the, to the outbound campaign once you are uh, ready to do so. But take those signals that are coming in. Four, let me show you a couple of examples of what I mean with those. For the brand, um, with the, uh, you, 
the controls that you have about the brand is making sure that all the users that are interacting with the tool see how that brand is, is, is working. And they do that through what you see is what you get interface. You can see it on the left side. You have, for instance, the integration with uh, the assets where you have the search for the relevant assets that you can find. Then you can just drag and drop that over onto the site to update your site. And on the right side here, what you can see is you can switch through different output devices. So you can then go ahead and actually see what does this look like, not just on my, on my web interface, but what does it look like on my mobile devices for my mobile sites. Remember, this is mobile for mobile web, web information for mobile devices. Here the user can simulate it and very easily see what the output is. Another element is the efficiency and agility. Uh, what you need once you actually go to what, it, what businesses want and what helps them is once you go from the microsite, the simple site, to actually many brands, many languages, and many, many pieces of information is means how you can automate that content. So you can define a central content. You can see how that is being reused in different other places. And once you actually make an update, it will just flow through it. Now, uh, it's never that easy. It just isn't. And so the local folks who are responsible, say the German portion of Switzerland, they will actually see that some element of that global message won't work. What they can do, or what you should allow them to do, is go in and overwrite one of those local pieces. And that overwrite will stay in place even when the information from the global element is flowing down in and around them. And at the point when they feel that this local overwrite isn't applicable anymore, they can revert it back. This is just one example how the, you can define magic in the tooling to actually push it along and help you be much more agile in a large rollout fashion. Another element on, uh, on the agility is a, what we believe is useful and should, you should expect is a central place for the projects. I mentioned it on assets and it is, given that it is in the platform, it is also available in uh, the sites. And what you can see here is a constellation of the projects. You know who is working on the project. You can invite people to the project over there. That's the team. You can actually see who uh, what experiences you're working on. And at this point, it's sort of a takeaway because I'm going to go to apps. We're working on the web, we're working on the mobile web, and we're working on apps at the same time. You can see the assets that you're using, and you also see that we're overdue with a couple of tasks. This helps you coordinate the challenges across the multiple teams, across the multiple silos, because you see where the challenges are. It is very visual. It is very tangible for you. Now. Next thing you do, if you go into any of those activities, for instance, a website could also be an asset. What you have is annotation, so you can collaborate across between the team members. And this is a way how social has found its way into today's uh, tooling, in, 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 for instance, the AEM6, is that the concept that I want to share with you, something that would like your feedback, oh, sorry, you were the wrong person. Yes, thanks for letting me know, because now it's going to you, and you need to help me update this. This dynamic nature of the business, where not everything can be predicted, is an essential element in driving the agility for the users. Demand. We heard about the push email. So in the geometrics example for the shoes, how was that put together? Well, here we're not doing shoes, but other sporting equipment of the company geometrics. You see that you have the target that's for male, or you have the male segment over 30. Unfortunately, I qualify for that. And so what you see is you have, you can define what the segments are and what content is you want. There. You can then visualize it and play it out. You can use it on landing pages. You can use it with campaign, as was shown before. You can use it with other integrations. What is more useful or what you should expect of a tool at a particular time is that you can also simulate it. Because can I have another show of hands who has a PhD in combinatorial uh, mathematics here? Ma'am, you up there? No? No one? OK. So as soon as we go beyond two or three or four dimensions, it becomes very, very difficult to see what is then the outcome of these segments coming together. 
So you should expect the tool to actually visualize that to you, to simulate that to you. So you see one segment would get the ultimate uh, protection on sale. You can switch users to another segment. You will see that they would get the same uh, view, but with the mountain is calling and the live to write, allowing you to simulate the personal experience out there. So it is one thing to deliver it, and it is another thing for you to simulate and see what that feels like. Because once you can simulate it, you can actually make sure that the brand is working exactly as you would expect it. And it allows you to then go ahead and optimize that based on how you intended it to look in the whole spectrum. Good. In summary, what you should expect or what you have with it from AEM sites, it is very innovative uh, product out there, easy to use. It supports multilingual and global. Uh, it allows you to control brand, but in an implicit way. It controls brand by allowing all the participants to see what the brand looks like. And therefore, through the collaboration mechanisms, I can get back to you and say, you know, is that really what you wanted to achieve? No? Okay. So you see the conflicts in the teams. You can also control it with templates and all those mechanisms. But the most important thing are the collaborative efforts uh, around it. And obviously, it allows you fast time to market. So. We've talked about sites, we've talked about assets, how they can help bring these illustrations together that you have seen in the demo before. And now I want to dive into apps. And what you see with apps is that we have a challenge that's very similar to uh, what happened in the other teams. Is on the business side, you find yourself uh, with a lack of control of what's going on. It is very complicated to make quick updates, as we've seen with a show of hands. Uh, either folks got tired or um, we actually have much fewer folks who, may, who are able in their companies to update the apps as quickly as they update the web. And there is a whole series of challenges on the development side that if you do care about them, let them know. I'd love to talk about them, but probably not here for right now. So how does that manifest itself? If you want to change in the app, you actually have the marketeer who wishes this change, who goes into a product manager who formulates that so that we from engineering can understand it. And engineering goes ahead to the developer, can implement it. The developer goes ahead, takes that implemented app, sends it back to the engineering manager who maybe loops through back to it again, goes to the product owner who then sends it to the marketeer who approves it when he likes it, sends it to IT, and it gets published to the app store. Thank you very much. Maybe two weeks later, I get those app changes out. We think that it should be easier. There should be an easier way on how to do this. You, we believe there should be a single interface where you see all your apps in all states. You should see all your apps in all states. So that means the apps that are in development, the apps that are in testing, and the apps that are out in production and of all your apps in one single interface. We actually believe you should not only see those apps, but you should also see all your web properties and the properties for mobile in one single place. Now, if you have them in one single place, we further believe that updating these changes should be just as easy as updating the website. And I think that's because we believe that I went ahead and implemented it with the teams, is that you have the drag and drop into the application just as you have it on the website. And this is the app. This is the app. Then, if you actually want to publish it out, click Publish, and the information is out there. Next time the app fires up, the new version will be synchronized. It's a technology we call Content Sync. So we don't see why those experiences that you're used to from the web should, be, uh, should not apply to apps. And because we believe that, we went ahead and we built it. Now, does that thing on the left look familiar? Yes, thank you very much. So if you are using assets that you have already used on your web properties, it would just be so splendidly great if you could also use those for the apps. Because if that is the case, then you actually get your brand consistency without any additional effort. It actually will cause folks to spend more effort to be brand inconsistent just on, from that perspective. So this is sort of what we believe in how the experience should be for you. Uh, out there. Now, remember the comment I made about uh, analytics and uh, the objective of management. So we also believe that if you are doing mobile apps, you should have analytics in there to see what's going on, to see how many times your app crashed, 
And I have a show of hands who believes that a crashing app is a good customer experience. So I'm getting some reaction here, but yeah. It, uh, can I see whether back there you're still alive? Show, okay, so okay, so they're alive and actually had zero show of hands. So do you know whether how, what the crash report is on your app? And no, maybe, I don't know, but every app you do in every time, in every stage, be it testing, development, testing, or activity, you should know this. Yeah, because I don't think that's a great brand experience. That goes back to the dilution of the brand experience. Uh, next time is wh where is your app being used? Where should you focus on? What is going on with the um, uh, what is going on with uh, with with the usages? This is usefully for you in the agility perspective because it helps you focus. We all have too much to do, so I think we as leaders out there, all we can do is help the teams focus. But if you don't have information, you don't know where to focus on. Uh, having the reports like this helps you focus. Last but not least, and this is where life gets exciting, is that you can actually do the pathing. You see how did the user flow through, how did the user flow through um, the whole app together? And this flow then you can compare, as we've seen in Waldo's demo, of uh, with the experience connected back together with the experience on the web and with the outbound campaign that you have. This is just what we believe. And because we believe that, and then my team is building the product, we also build it into uh, AEM apps. And we did that with the uh, Marketing Cloud Mobile SDK. So that was mentioned before. And I just want to sort of draw back to what was shown in the plenary, plenary situation and how we sort of put that together and what we think that should be standard out uh, in the industry from expectation perspective. OK, so summarizing uh, the uh, AEM uh, apps experience is what you have is you have a platform that allows marketeers to easily change the information in apps in just the same flow with the same speed, same reactiveness, reactiveness as you do for websites. Uh, if a person doesn't go to a website, either with their mobile phone, they don't see the update until they connect. Same thing with the app as well. You should have the uh, built-in analytics out of the box so you have the measurements for the management piece. Now, for the geeks in the room, like me, uh, I can tell you it's built using PhoneGap, and it includes PhoneGap Enterprise. Uh, PhoneGap, and this is from the guys that are um, this is from the guys that are uh, from us who push to enable to work with PhoneGap to actually push that into the open source and create the Apache Cordova project. Excellent. So I'm coming to the wrap up of how I see we can enable you and help you deliver. Uh, amazing experiences and what expectations you should have. Three takeaways that I would like to come to. Number one, amaze with apps, uh, with assets. Well, apps as well, but that comes afterwards. Uh, amaze with assets. Use the creativity, use the creativity that we have to inspire, to transform, to create emotions around your brand and to create the engagement out there. And with assets in AM, case of AM assets, you have a tool that helps just in and of itself across the marketing cloud, or in your case, that helps you uh, use that inspiration across the teams. So you can just for that portion of it, break down the silos. Now, you can also amaze uh, through having engaging experiences on your sites. And when I say sites, I mean mobile sites and sites targeted for your browsers. I mean a landing page and a microsite. And I mean hundreds of thousands of pages across uh, dozens of brands and hundreds of languages and hundreds of sites. Number three, and out there is amazed through apps that are consistent with your brand. And if you obviously have all of those integrated, that consistency comes, it's a given, but you can also build out those consistencies. You can start in any end of the game trying to amaze, be it with the apps today, be it with uh, through leveraging better assets, as we have seen in the previous presentation here. We're adding the emotion to the customer story. Uh, adding the emotion to the customer story has uh, increased the, the turnaround of the company and made it to uh, a growth hacker. Excellent. If you do want to know more, uh, here is a QR code that you can use. And thank you very much for your attention. And I hand it back to uh, the plenary session. Merci beaucoup.